Mm. All right, fellas. So y'all know it's June, right? We made it to June. We're halfway through the year. It is Men's Health Month. And um, I don't know about y'all, but it, it's really important to uh, get folks to understand how important our health is, particularly as brothers as we face so many different challenges. Um, I'm reminded of uh, John Singleton passing a few years ago because he hadn't, um, well, I don't know if he had or hadn't, but he had a heart attack, I believe it was, um, you know, suddenly. Young man doing amazing things, but it was it's just tragic that our cardiovascular health, our um, just our health in general is is on the edge of uh, so much disaster that can bring disaster to our families for generations. So we want to, um, you know, I just wanted to get you, you guys' thoughts on June and Men's Health Month, and if you you got any thoughts on it. Well, as you said, <clears throat> Assemblyman, this is an issue that affects everybody, but it disproportionately affects us as black men. <clears throat> I can speak, you know, from my own perspective. I, I have heart disease. I was diagnosed when I was 40 years old, unexpected. I didn't have any symptoms or pain or signs. Uh, but because of high blood pressure, because of blockage, because of not taking good enough care of myself and the stresses with work, with family, with obligations that you feel like overwhelmed sometimes as black men, you know, we don't know when to stop and take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of other people. And, and again, this is something that 44% of black men are diagnosed with some form of heart disease. Now, that's diagnosed. Unfortunately, we have far too many of us who never get diagnosed because, they, you know, we won't want to go to the doctor. Or we see something that, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling perfectly well and I don't want to tell anybody about it. I myself avoided confronting my situation until it like slapped me in my face to where I had to do it. Um, for those who don't know, in 2013, I went through open heart bypass surgery, six way, uh, to essentially remake my uh, heart valves because of uh, two of my three arteries were 100% blocked, and my third artery was 70% blocked. The fact that I'm alive today is a blessing. Praise God. And I do thank God because he was able to get me the care and the treatment that I needed. But my message to anyone listening, and especially to the brothers listening, is, you know, you're worth protecting your health. Your health is worth protecting because it's going to take care of you, first and foremost, so that you can take care of everybody else. And so I want to commend Shop Talk, the event on June 16th at Masterpiece Barber School. Uh, definitely want to commend uh, Marcus Allen and everything that he does to bring uh, this information to the community because, you know, what better place to get this information but from your barber? Like, for real. Like, one thing we don't miss is, a, is, a, is to get a lineup. Right. To get that fade, <laughs> right? To look right, right. And usually, it's our barber who we're talking about everything with, right? From the challenges in life to you know the the things we're doing uh, that's positive to our health. And so, I want to commend Masterpiece Barber School and, and Marcus Allen and all the barbers out there who are doing a good thing, especially the Southern Nevada Health District for being so creative about. Shop talk. This was very effective some years ago, mm -hmm. and I know we helped to get the word out even around COVID testing and everything around the barbershops. But whatever we can do to get the message out, you know, I'm yeah. all in. And if my story can be an example for somebody else, I just pray that uh, they will listen. It, it, right. And, and the sad part is your story is not so uncommon, right? And there's probably a lot more of us who are walking around with hypertension or issues 
that we have just not um, dealt with because we haven't gone to the doctor because we don't want to for whatever our reasons are. Mm-hmm. But y'all, we got to figure out. We got to we got to come to a place where we decide the doctors are our friends, <laughs> like our like our barbers, yeah. right? Like when we go see Mr. Marcus Allen and the crew over at Masterpiece, he joined us in the room. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but we need to do that. I'm I'm looking at some stats here, and it says according to uh, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, men in the United States on average die five years earlier than women and die at higher rates from the three leading causes of death, heart disease, cancer, and unintentional injury injuries. We know we don't go to the doctor if it don't hurt that bad. Sometimes it, it just hurt a little bit and we, you know, we walk it off. We take some rope <laughs> and we do whatever we got to do, but, but that's causing us to die at a higher rate. Um, again, we talked about heart disease. We talked about cancer, all of those things. The high blood pressure is the silent killer. Um, and the prevalence of hypertension is the highest in African Americans, often referred to as the silent killer. Silent. You know, um, we need to know our numbers. We need to be out there getting tested. And so I'm also excited about the Shop Talk event being held on June 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Masterpiece Barber School. 3510 East Bonanza Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110 with my man Marcus Allen of Mar- Masterpiece Barber School. <laughs> my brother, you got you got any thoughts on this? Um, you got any thoughts on yes, this? Yes, um, uh, I, I, I tap in right there. Um, we got to understand that we, the number one thing that we pretty much taught as a kid is actually to uh, how to save money. One of the first things that we say, we get a piggy bank. Uh, bank. We start depositing money inside the piggy bank, mm-hmm. but we never was taught more so our health. So therefore, we start off teaching wealth more so than health. Mm-hmm. So we start teaching our younger kids more so of health than the wealth because the wealth cannot buy you health. You see what I'm saying? So it's more important that we actually push that forward than what we actually do, and especially coming in the barber shop that. Us as individuals, and especially sitting in the chair, and then we talking and having conversation, we talk about some real personal things. You know, um, the barbers become your counselor, your friend, your uh, hangout buddy, some problems that you might have, help, help you solve them and things like that. And we also almost become the doctor because in our profession way back in the early 1800s that we was actually the doctors ourselves. You know, that's how we actually came up with the barber pole. It's actually from way back then from the rag that we had rinsed from the blood and the water. That's how the barber pole was performed from there. So, therefore, we have to take that on from what we was doing way back in the day and actually incorporate that to now today that we're showing and telling each other about the health more so than our wealth. You just yeah, dropped man, a whole lot of knowledge right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> Going all the way back to the history. But it's true. Barbers, it's a profession. Right. It's a profession. And, and not only are you trained to make people look good, but you have the sanitation. You have all the aspects about being able to identify signs in people that may be a little uh, worrisome that have to be addressed. You are the counselor. I know I've shared some things with you yes. in the barber chair. And, and again, but what I, wa- I do want to encourage people, it, it, it is possible to work out, lose weight, to, you know, eat a little better, right. put down the thing that, you know, is contributing to you adding weight because all of this is what adds to the hypertension. And it's not easy. You know, we, we develop habits. We do things out of pattern. A lot of it's, some of it's cultural. Some of it's passed down from generation to generation. But as you said, we can break that cycle. Right. We can generate generational health and wealth, yes. right? Because we need to live longer. We need to prosper more. And we need to be able to think about the legacy that we're living, leaving, especially as we're about to celebrate, you know, Father's Day and this month and what it men, means for men's health. You know, I'm, I'm here because I want my children, my daughter, my sons to know, you know, dad's done what he needed to do to take care of him so that I could see them grow up. We got to we got to more so, and especially with the foods, the, the, the two main ingredients that everything we just about eat have into it. <laughs> that causes our problems. It's the two white things, sugar yeah. and salt. Yeah. Put down the salt. I don't even buy salt. The, the sugar and the salt. Yeah. I sugar use pink and sugar, and sugar and the salt. It, it, it's <laughs> sugar and the salt. Pink the two main, everything that you pick, any box you pick up and look at the ingredients, 
Everything has salt in it. Right. Everything has sugar in it. I don't care what it is. It has some sugar and, and some salt in it. And there's a no So we already salt. have our dose already that what we need, so we don't need to add to that. Correct, right. And that's what we've been doing is adding to it, and that's why we're overdoing it ourselves, and then we end up with these situations. Right. There's a no salt seasoning at Costco that I've been using for years because <laughs> I do good. like to season my food. Right. Yes. You know, right. I like some flavor, right. but I don't use salt. No. But I, I have a no salt seasoning that I use. When I, when I, um, you're going, you're going to share that with everybody. Right, everybody, right. everybody, 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 so look, if y'all want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, we got to focus on health first. Yes. We got to build our wealth, and we got to use wisdom to do all of that. All right. And we can do that this month um, on uh, June 16th at Masterpiece Barber College from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, with the Southern Nevada Health District in partnership with the Barbershop Health Outreach Project. Uh, they will host Shop Talk, an evening of unfiltered dialogue to discuss men's heart health and overall wellness. As the congressman said, 44% of black men are diagnosed with some, uh, some form of heart disease. When it comes to men's health, we often think we good. But hmm. the real question is, are we good? Right? And we can be better. And we can be it's better. It's okay to confront if it's not good, but we can always be better and do better. And yes. that, you know, I felt, and you know, I did feel shame. Mm -hmm. I felt shame when... I got diagnosed with my heart disease. I'm 40 years old. I feel good. I'm, I'm in relatively good health. I'm working out. But to hear that news, it, it sucker punched me. And so what I've learned is you don't want people to feel so discouraged that they can't do anything. That we can. Yes. We can. Yes. You get up. My, my, I just talked to my doctor about this the other day. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm off my routine. I need to get back in the gym. He's like, just get up and walk an hour. Get on the treadmill, do your elliptical for one hour, and then get back into the weights and the other things that you are doing because that's what's going to make you strong. Okay, and there's it's two things I want to touch on real quick. Let's get this understanding that by us having it at the barber school, we have nothing to do with the barber school whatsoever. It's not about getting another student, getting some more money, getting some more revenue, getting some more clients. It's nothing, have nothing to do with that period. So if you guys is out there, most definitely come down and let's talk about this. And the thing, the reason why we need to talk about it is because once again, as a kid, we was taught to be tough. Stick it out. Stand up like a man. Be tough as you can. And that's our problem that we carried on to our whole life. I don't need no doctor. I feel a pain. Oh, it ain't nothing. This is a little old pain. It's a little Egg right there. It's a little peach right there. I'm <laughs> fine. I'm good. I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. We always ask each other, right. how you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm good. Right. Well, you're not good. When the last time you checked? Well, man, I don't even know. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You don't even know what's going on. You don't know what's bubbling in the inside. That's getting ready to create a monster that might can take you down and take your body. And you'd be surprised how so many people die in their sleep. Mm-hmm. Because their body get rest, they, they actually is the, 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 your body is vulnerable to whatever's in this inside that's bubbling over, that's getting ready to take over your body and then put you to rest. Absolutely. So we have to get these checkups. We have to get the blood work. I asked some of my barbers. I said, "Have you got blood work?" No, nah, man. I've been a doctor. I got checked. What what checkup did you get? Oh man, he just checked my he checked my blood pressure. Man, he looked at me, he looked in my eyes, my ears, and hit my knee a couple of times. No, that's not. At this day and age, we need blood because blood defines a lot of things. And actually, when you get a real blood test, you will see your numbers. And now let's get this understanding, too, because most doctors, what they do is they only tell you about the red flag that's in your blood. But they don't see the, the numbers when they're climbing and it's getting to turn into something. They don't pretty much tell you that. They just talk to you about the red. But you need to talk to your doctor about, hey, what, these num what number have went up or went down? Where are we at with this number and that number? It's just instead of saying, oh, well, this red, the, right here's the red flag. We just want to discuss this right here and this coming up. Like, no, I want to discuss all of my numbers, right. not just what you see as a red flag. Right. I think, Marcus, you said something really important. Um, if we don't have trust within our, our health care system, right, if I don't trust my doctor to be able to tell my doctor the truth, my doctor's a she, Shaniqua, uh, who we, we did some work with, and she's phenomenal, and she did my blood work, and then as she's talking to me, she said, 
Um, so what's your history of this? What's your history? Then she just started just bringing up stuff just from hearing me talk, right? Um, then she said, we're going to do this test early for you, even though you're not 40 yet, but this is important because of X, Y, and Z. And then we sat down for almost 30 minutes as she went through my, my blood panel. And she's like, and I'm going to pull it again in this amount of time. And the same way that my barber can tell me, hey, man, you're getting real gray up here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm seeing more and more. It's too soft with that. You gotta, <laughs> if you have a relationship with your doctor, like you were saying, Congressman, over time they're able to tell you, hey, man, you may need to check on this. Like, your cholesterol is good right now, but I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this number. You should do X, Y, and Z. And that, historically, black men have had a lot of distrust in the healthcare system. Some is very rational. But we have to make sure we find a healthcare professional um, that is going to be a partner with us in our health journey so that we're not just on the outside and then just not wake up one day, right? And then we got a family we got to take care of. We got kids who are trying to figure out what's wrong with dad. And I think both of y'all said something important that we not only can take care of ourselves, but we can set that, that journey and that trajectory for our kids. Uh, God forbid... Um, you know, I'm leaving my kids with a bad understanding of what the healthcare system is, right? I'm leaving them with a bad understanding of what it means to be healthy. I'm from the country, and I'm trying to get away from everything being smothered. I'm doing a lot better about that. Um, <laughs> y'all pray for me uh, with with salt because I use pink salt. I know it ain't too much better, but we, you know, it's we have to change that because in the same way that uh, we can break generational curses, that's a generational curse that just by the way. We change our culture, right? And our and our, it may take two generations, right? We might have to reinstill it with our grandkids too, but that's an opportunity for us to literally change the trajectory of our bloodline. You know? Yeah, but you mentioned the salt, and you say you use a little bit. We have to understand what we're actually satisfying when you say oh, I have to have me some salt. Exactly. You only satisfying your tongue. Mm -hmm. Don't nothing in your throat or your stomach taste anything. The tongue report to your brain on what that tastes like, what you say with the seasoning, mm -hmm. right. it's only your tongue. And you let that tongue, ooh, that, that show tastes good rubbing your stomach. You should be rubbing your tongue. Right, right. <laughs> More so than your stomach. But you just stop trying to satisfy that tongue. Mm -hmm. Because what tastes good ain't always good. Now and a lot of stuff that's really good for you don't taste so good. Now so you're that's what you got to turn that tongue around. You got to change the mind. <laughs> Reverend Carroll. You, you got the masterpiece <laughs> church, church. Right. Look, look, exactly. Right. I want to just raise one last point. So I'm going to be 50 next year. Come on, boss. Hey, Congratulations. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the 50. <laughs> <laughs> and part of what I've also learned is, yeah, what you need to do at 30 and 40 and 45 and 50 and hopefully 60 and 70 is not the same thing. And black men, again, we have a lower life expectancy because of a lot of factors. Stress. Stress. Socioeconomic, you know, coming from communities that are, uh, you know, high, high violent crime, whatever. But heart disease, cancer, these things contribute to it as well. And so there are things you have to do at certain points in your life, in certain age things. And again, it's just understanding and having the conversation. Ain't nothing wrong with me having a conversation like, yeah, I got to take vitamin E because I got that's a deficiency. Right. But that's something I found by doing my, my blood panel. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong. Right. You know, it's a deficiency that can be addressed by taking a vitamin. So... Now I take a vitamin, vitamin yes. E. You get the information, you have the power. Right. right. And that's what's yeah. happening with this shop talk and why we have to continue to have these opportunities. Again, I commend you, Marcus. Obviously, you, you're always in the community. You're always finding ways to be Thank you. involved and, and to share information, to not keep it to ourselves, but to get it out to people. And I think each one of us as brothers can, uh, we're a living testament and a testimony to both the struggles and the success and yeah. you are a tremendous success. Thank you. Yeah, and you that. always had a, a vision for what you were going to do, and you have done it. And I know there's probably more yeah, that's still more. in the works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you said something very serious, though. Um, you said the vitamin. You're taking vitamin now. And it's a natural vitamin, something like that you're actually mm -hmm. taking. And we're not informed about the natural vitamins that's actually out there for us that we don't also have to take so much medication. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to put no commercial up for nothing to nobody, <laughs> but stay healthy. If you have a condition and you actually on medication, 
you can go to stay healthy, and they will actually get you a natural herb that more so deal with that, so they kind of wing yourself off the medication and go to a natural vitamin. They don't advise you to just stop cold and go over, right. but it kind of seesaw you and wing you over, so you want to be dependent so much on the medication that's full of so many chemicals yeah. and get you some natural help would make it more better for your body. Yeah, and, and that's that's something you definitely need to um, consult with your medical professional on, yeah. um, on how exactly to do that so that you're doing it in the best way possible. Um, and, and I think that, um, I mean, we've said so many amazing things, just discussed, so, opened so many doors, right, to, to start having this conversation this month, all month long. Um, I'm going to kick it over to Ender to, to, to yeah. close us out. Yeah, so, um, I, I, so first of all, thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Assemblyman. Thank you, Master Barber and Instructor. Um, <laughs> I think you. it's so important that we start this conversation, not only start it, but that we continue it. And so I'm really excited um, that the Southern Nevada Health District, uh, along with uh, Get Healthy Clark County, uh, Masterpiece Barbershop, Nevada Health Centers, 100 Black Men, uh, Gold Standard Consulting, that's, that's my firm, uh, and Nevada Office of Minority Health and Equity um, have come together really to lead this conversation. And I guess I'll, I'll say it in a minute, Alpha Alpha as well. Uh, but uh, actually, a man of Phi Beta Sigma, Robert Twix Taylor, is going to be hosting this conversation. And I think it's, it's, it's extremely vital, right, that we have um, a real conversation in the space, right, that we really sit down and we figure out um, how we can live together. I think it was said either we um, live to live together as brothers or dwell together, as die together as fools or die as fools. Um, and, and I think this is what this allows us, right? We put that out and disaggregate it with only money and war. But when it comes to our health, we're literally at war. There's so much that's against us as black men, like you were saying, Congressman, socioeconomically, um, stress, et cetera, right? And if we can band together, because uh, what, what, what works for me uh, may work for Marcus on something. And what's not working for Cameron, oh, excuse me, what, uh, for Assemblyman, uh, the, the Congressman may say, you know what, I try vitamin E, right? There's so much um, knowledge that it's a power. And so I'm, I'm appreciative for y'all, and I really want to encourage everyone to, uh, to go uh, to get healthy, clockcounty.org forward slash shop talk and it's going to be actually at the bottom of the screen and so we're appreciative for um, for y'all and appreciative i'll say this uh, for nevada partners for making this space uh, available to us to hold this conversation shout out to dr brown um, and our interim uh, board chair as well as everybody's boss asha jones because whatever gets done in this city <laughs> is because asha was behind it so um, so i appreciate y'all and i'm um, definitely looking forward to this event on 16th thank you for your time gentlemen thank Absolutely. you Thanks. thank you everyone too